Hi everybody, thank you for joining me again for another Behind the Poem video on uh, from my collection Between Hindsight and Foresight. Uh, this week's video, this week's poem that I'm going to be talking about is one of the oldest ones in the collection. It's, it's one of the few older ones that I can pinpoint almost exactly when I wrote it and the circumstances around it. Um, I am enjoying myself thinking about the 4th of July that today is and thinking way, way back to being a teenager and thus the, you know, William Tennant hoodie that I'm enjoying in this kind of chilly summer day in the rain, in the overcast, in order to um, kind of get myself back in the mode of when I was in high school and when I wrote this poem. The poem for this week is Broken Mask. And it was very, um, very good for me, very, very enjoyable for me when friends of mine and colleagues of mine started reading the book, started reading the collection of poems. And I got a number of compliments on Broken Mask, on how much Broken Mask uh, felt like they had written it themselves or like... Uh, I had a colleague tell me the other um, last week that uh, she was reading the the collection, but she had to stop after Broken Mask because it was too too real, too close to the bone, um, that it resonated too much, and that is um, both good and bad because obviously Broken Mask is about how we are fighting our own instincts. Uh, to conform, how we all have expectations laid on us, expectations that we put on ourselves, expectations that our parents put on us as children, expectations that our peers put on us as children, expectation that society puts on everybody, parents, children, teachers, everybody. Um, and so that, that need to conform to what society expects us to be, regardless of what we actually want to be. Um, that we create these faces, we create these facades that we put on, masks that we present to the world because that is what the world wants to see. And of course, we want to be accepted. We want to be what the world expects of us so that we will feel loved and we will feel, um, we will feel accepted. We will not be rejected. We will not be cast aside because we're doing what we're supposed to do. We're doing the job that we're supposed to do as people, as members of a, of a community, of a society. And Broken Mask was basically, was layers of irony. There, there are layers and layers of irony about Broken Mask and the situation which created it. Um, it was actually an assignment. It was an assignment that I had to do for class, for my advanced placement English class in the last year of high school. So I was 17, maybe gonna turn 18 very soon, depending on what time of year it was, but it was my my last year of high school, and it was my absolute favorite English teacher's class. The, the English teacher that I try to be, having grown up to be an English teacher, I loved the sarcasm and the playing devil's advocate, and we would fall for it, every time. This English teacher would argue with us and take the opposite position of whatever we were saying, not because he actually believed in that side, but to make us better debaters, to make us better at arguing and reasoning and, and that kind of thing. And he'd, he'd only be able to hold it up for so long. Like he would, he would argue with us until he couldn't take it anymore and fell about laughing. And we realized that he'd been playing devil's advocate and we fell for it every time. Every time. He would set off the, the, the people in the class who would argue with each other and then just sit back and let us, let us all learn from ourselves, learn from each other. And, you know, the, the literature that was chosen in that class as an advanced placement class was always very, very good. And the, the humor was always very sarcastic and, and critical so that we would not just, you know, accept what was in the book, that we would not just accept the standard interpretation that we would think about the interpretation. And, you know, I know that I'm not the only one who experienced that in this in this man's English class. I know that some of the lessons that we were taught, some of the hilarious things that we were taught lasted far longer than high school. But this particular assignment, 
um, was based off of a reading of a poetry anthology, probably the, the first kind of comprehensive poetry anthology that I, I read as part of a part of a curriculum called the Spoon River Anthology by Edgar Lee Masters. And the Spoon River Anthology was published originally in 1914, and it was about small town America. Now, I came from a suburb of a big city, but a lot of aspects of that suburb were still linked and elemental with that small town America. And so it was particularly resonating with all of us. These were free verse poems that were written as stories of the lives and losses and feelings and emotions and of, of the epitaphs of a graveyard in small town America. So almost like voices from the grave. He went through and looked at the cemetery and looked at the names and looked at the epitaphs on the graves and used those to kind of postulate what their lives were like and how they interacted with other graves within the graveyard and what what conversations would be having, what the, the voices might have said after they died if they got to give their own eulogy or the, their own epitaph. And so we got the assignment after reading a large section of the poems to do our own, you know, kind of, I, I don't remember exactly how he phrased it, but it was more like, if you didn't have to care what anybody thought of you, if you didn't have to care if you hurt someone or made someone happy or didn't make someone happy, if you, if you were writing your own eulogy, if you were writing your own epitaph after uh, you've passed, how would you do it? What would you say? if you were being really honest. And so Broken Mask is the result of that assignment. And when I was going through and deciding what poems to put in, I always knew that this one had to be in. And some of my poems from, from that long ago needed a great deal of editing. They needed some polishing on vocabulary and punctuation structure. Broken Mask had very little change to it. I think there are a couple of lines that were like, you know, high school specific to things like, you know, marching panther band or something like that. I don't think I, I had anything for the marching band in there, but the, the, the poem itself, the free was one of the first free verse poems I ever wrote. And, um, cause I, I, I liked trying to, um, conform <laughs> to, to accepted poetry forms. I like to make it rhyme. So it was a real poem, but this was the first free verse poem I tried. And it's almost exactly as it is the day I wrote it. It's almost exactly as it is when I presented it in class. Because obviously he had us write all of these poems as, as the assignment that we got a grade for. And then he had us all kind of gather and read them together, read them out. Um, and everybody read. I don't, I don't remember anybody refusing to, to read out their poem. It may have happened, but I, I don't re remember it happening. What I remember happening was that next level irony. Everybody wrote almost the same thing. Obviously, everybody, everybody wrote it in different words, in different ways, with different examples. But Broken Mask talks about feeling like you're unknown, feeling like you present that facade, you present that conformity to the world, and they just accept it. And there's all this... Um, all this stuff going on behind it, all this emotion, all this feeling, all this fear, all this disappointment, all this um, uh, concern about being rejected behind the mask. And we feel like we're listening to everybody else and everybody else is leaning on us or depending on us or asking us for advice and, and, and respecting us. There's a, a line in the poem about how other people read my poems and thought they were good when I, even when I was in high school. And you know, didn't, didn't really get that, you know, when they said, oh, I wish I could write like that, that those poems were coming from emotional struggles I was having, that they were, they were my therapy, they were my cathartic release. And it's like, why would you want to be able to write like that? You know, why would you want to be able to write like that? Because it comes from pain. I mean, now I understand that the reason that people, some people wish they could have write like that is because they felt the same way and wanted to be able to express it, but somehow couldn't. And when we sat there and listened to each other's poems as teenagers, realizing that we all felt isolated, 
we all felt like we had a facade that we had to put on in order to be accepted, that we had a facade that we had to put on that everybody expected of us and nobody was listening and nobody really truly knew who we were inside. We kind of like looked around at each other and we're like, oh my God, you know, we're not alone. We don't, we're not the only ones that feel this way. We're not the only ones that, that feel like we're not being heard or listened to or, or even known. And so one of the reasons why I wrote the poetry collection in the first place and wanted it published, that I've wanted to be published for 20 years, was because I, I, I'm not practical, I'm not good with math, I'm, I'm not good with building stuff or using my hands, but, but words I can do. I, I, I can honestly say I, I like expressing myself, I'm good at expressing myself. And I wanted to publish the poems because I wanted other people to realize that they're not alone, that other people feel this way, that it's okay to feel this way, the good, the bad, the ugly, everything, the silly, um, you know, all of that. We have all of that and they're not alone. They're not isolated. And that poem not only helped me express that from my own self, but the class project made us all realize that we as a collective, we as a class felt that way. And so we've grown up to be doctors and lawyers and teachers and, and people that reach out and try and help other people be that. Um, that they that try to help other people realize that they're not alone. And so uh, Broken Mask was an assignment by my favorite English teacher. And he helped us all see each other. And now that it's in the book, people, friends and colleagues of mine, people I know that are reading that see themselves in it, feel that, that resonance of self-isolation that we do to ourselves and that wish that others could know us. Um, out there. And so Broken Mask, of, of all the poems in the book, Broken Mask seems to be doing the best job, or at least doing its job, in trying to make us all realize that we have a voice, that voice matters, and that we should tell people, we should reach out, take the, the, the broken mask, break the mask that we present to the world, be our most true selves, and, you know, let others see, because they may be feeling the exact same way and need someone else to break the mask and show them underneath and, you know, reach out. So let's all put on our, our most comfortable clothes, um, forget the makeup, pick up, the, pick up the, the glass of water or the glass of whatever, and, um, and show ourselves to be who we are, because who we are is, is definitely enough. Thank you for listening. If you know anybody that needs to hear this, please share the poems. Please share the link to the book. Please share the video. Let them hear. They're not alone. Thank you.